This is not in addition to what we currently offer for free. And there are two rules when it comes to bonus points. Number one is the order has to be at least $100 on the line one to be able to offer any free stuff. So they do have to be spending at least $100 to be able to get anything for free. And two, bonus points are only allowed on the first call special. So you can only offer free stuff the first time that you see somebody. Now, to make sense of this, open up your price list. This will make a lot more sense if you're actually looking at your price list. Yes, sir. Someone's bought something on the first visit, and they're a preferred customer, and they still get that free stuff? That's ultimately what being a preferred customer is. When someone places an order on your first visit, they're locked in as a preferred customer, which entitles you to always be able to use the bonus point of the system permanently with them forever. That's really what being a preferred customer is. So for example, um, let's say you got a customer who's, you're on the homemaker. So if they're considering a homemaker, a homemaker is $1,000. So how many points would they have if they were spending $1,000? 200. 200. Now the kitchen tools are 130 points and the super shears are 70 points, which totals 200 points. So you can kind of see where we get offering the kitchen tools and the shears for free on a homemaker. So we can't offer stuff in addition. Well, we could, because if you remember, you can use up to two, 25 points per hundred if it's going to help make a sale. So if you absolutely had to, you could offer up to another 50 point item if you felt like it might like put the customer over the edge where they would actually do it. You could do that. More often than what, more often than not, what I recommend is just swap on sets. Just swap the free stuff. So let's say you're offering them the kitchen tools and the shares for free, and the customer's like, well, I've got an sink pan, so I wouldn't even want those kitchen tools. They'd scratch my pants. Well, that's not even going to be a very good incentive for them if they can't even use those kitchen tools on their cookware. So in that case, I'm going to try and find something else that maybe I know they might like that I could offer for free instead. And let's say the husband like is a big hunter. You know, if I know that, and I showed him the hunting knife and he showed some interest, well, the hunting knife is only 115 points. So if I want to swap out the hunting knife for the kitchen tools, that's actually going to be less points, which gives me a higher CPO and gives them exactly what they want. So you can do lots of stuff like that when it comes to Seth. There's all kinds of, you can basically offer anything for free on sets as long as it fits within the guidelines. Now that's not in addition to what you already offer, but you can swap things. Now that's pretty self-explanatory as far as sets go. Where you're really going to see a big difference though is on like lists. This is really where this plays the biggest role is when it comes to the like lists. Because this weekend, what we had you guys do, excuse me, is we had you offer every fifth item for free, from most expensive to least expensive. That was the system that we had you use this weekend. And that is a system that is using bonus points. However, it's being very, very, very conservative. In most cases, when you offer every fifth item for free, you're only using about 10 to 15 points per hundred. So you can typically offer them a way better deal if you just use the system. And also, part of the other issue with the every fifth item is once they drop below five items, for example, to their three favorites, you can't really offer anything for free. Which using the point system, you actually can. And that's is why this is so awesome, because it really helps you offer some sweet deals, you don't even have to the smaller orders. So for example, um, someone just give me an example of a like list that a customer wrote up this weekend. Uh, maybe they did not purchase. Ideally, they did not purchase it, but they did write it up that we could just use as an example. Mm -hmm. Do you have it? Actually, yeah. Anybody have it? Did you have one right there? Okay, let's hear it. Uh, Ariel? Um, she did a fairy knife. Petite slicer? Uh, well, no, the cheese slicer, sorry. Oh, cheese slicer. Okay. And then fork and knife. Okay. Is that a soft grip cheese knife or traditional? Traditional. 
this customer a table knife and a peeler based off of every fifth item being for free. So in that case, this customer saved about 60 bucks. Not bad, but using the point system we can probably offer them a little better deal to make this a little more appealing to this customer. Now you did the demo with this customer, uh, Ariel, so what was their like absolute like favorite two or three things on here? Um, well, Bought the paring knife. And then um, she really liked the table knives. So, what about this? What about if we gave this customer four table knives for free? Saves her $130 versus $60. Do you think that might be a little more appealing for a customer to say yes to? Sure, it might. Now, I don't know if we can do it or not, but let's see. So, if if we wanted to offer the table knife for free, all four of them, just hook her, hook her up, give her a good deal, that would bring it down to 340 Now the most important thing when it comes to using and calculating and figuring out bonus points, the most important thing is you got to base the points off of this price, not this price, because they're not going to be spending that much, they're going to be spending that much. So you have to base the bonus points off of what they would actually be buying. So the way I check, because it's not always going to be 300 even or 400 even or 500 even. And so points can also be you know, a, a mixed match number. And so I just take the amount that they're spending and multiply by 0.2. And that tells me I have 68 points. Or if I want max points and say, well, what's the best deal I could give this customer? I can take 340 and multiply by 0.25. That tells me I have 85 points. Well. Let's see if we can do this. First off, how many points are four table knives? Uh, 84. 84 points? Can we do it? Yes, we can. We could. Now, this would be a really screaming sweet awesome deal for this customer. And I'm not always encouraging you to like max out your points like this, because it is going to come out of your CPO. But at the same time, this customer bought a pairing knife, right? Even if I maxed out and had to offer all 85 points and I end up only having a CPO of 250, that's still better than 54. Right? Now, did she pay in full? Okay, so paid in full. Check this out. If we did this for the customer, 340, well, what's that on a five pay? So she paid $54 plus tax. So realistically, probably paid about 57, 58 bucks today. Well, this on a five pay is only 73. So, this is, you know, they're comfortable spending 60. For $13 more, they could have gotten literally everything on their like list. Ariel's like pissed right now. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so, now, how many of you feel like this maybe would have helped you a little bit this weekend <coughs> had you known about? Okay. So, you can, you can only offer this the first time you see someone, unless it was somebody you saw this weekend. Okay? If you saw somebody this weekend, you feel like they maybe would have wanted to get more, or maybe would have got more, had you been able to offer them a little better deal, you can, you can feel free to show this to those individuals. Uh, and if you think it will help, you can definitely write up an order for it. Now, um, now, here's what's great about this. When you drop down, Ariel, what did they take off? Uh, I think they took everything off except for the four table knives and the pairing. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so let's just say that. Obviously, that would be taking way, off, way more off than we would ideally like them to take off. But even so, sometimes stuff like that happens. Well, they obviously still said no to that because they only bought the pairing knife, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe even on this, we might be able to offer them a little better deal. Uh, which, in that case, did you offer them one table knife for free still? Okay, so you did. 
So we might not be able to do much here. Um, I don't know if we could. Like the most we could do. Yeah, we couldn't even do that. You could you could offer them a table knife, or what you could do, you could do something like this. You could offer them one table knife for free, or we could have the customer buy those two items that they really like, and then offer them something else that they really like for free, like maybe the cheese knife. You know, let's say if that was something that they thought was really cool, or uh, you know the spatula spreader. They thought that was cool. You could throw in a spatula spreader is only 35 points. So if I take 186, multiply it by 0.2. Tells me I got 37 points. I could throw in a spatula spreader. I could throw in that cheese dye for free. I could throw in, you know, I could throw in the ice cream scoop for free. I could throw in the ice cream scoop and the peeler if I really wanted to. So you can give them a good deal even on a smaller like list like that. And that and that holds a lot of weight because you can get down to even just one piece where. Uh, let's say they want the chef knife. Chef knife is only 114. Well, you, this is you could throw in like a 20 to 25 point item for free on that. You could throw in a free cutting board. You could throw in a free ice cream scoop, a free peeler, and so even if they're only getting one, two, three items, you can still give them a good deal. And so that's where it's really nice because you can only do that the first time they see it. And we can do this on how many payments? Five, yeah, you can do that on five, not five, not five, no, how many payments can you do that on? Three, three, you do it on three payments. And so it's like this one is still only $67 today. So it's like, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Jones, if you want to get just those table knives and that paring knife, we can split it up on only three payments, but it'll only be 67 today, and then just 67 over the next two months. And if you guys do that, I know you really like that spatula spreader, I buy that for you. It's a fifty-nine dollar knife. It saves you fifty-nine bucks, but you guys would be getting, uh, you know, the table knife, the pair knife, and the spatula spreader, and it'll only be sixty-seven today. And that makes it pretty easy to say yes. Now, by the way, this is also how you can build on orders. You know, Sarah, I know you had a couple orders where a customer bought like a couple pieces, and you know, once you, or even if they're buying like just one piece, you know, let's say. I'm just going to use your example because we know that this customer bought the pairing knife. So let's say you have a customer that you go through this drop down process and they're like, no, that's too much. You drop down here and they're like, yeah, that's too much. You drop down and they're like, you know what, I, I'd just like to get that pairing knife. I just want to buy the pairing knife. Okay, no problem. I'm writing up the order. I'm figuring out the order. All said and done, this pairing knife is $54 times 1.06. $57.24. Oh shoot. $10 more. And they could be getting four table knives, the paring knife, and the spatula spreader for only $10 more today. There's a lot of people out there that will spend a little more to get a way better deal. It's like the people go into Fred Meyer to buy a 12-pack of Coke, and the 12-pack is $7, and the 24-pack is $8. They're like, yeah, I'm buying the 24-pack. It's a way better deal. It's only a little more, but it's a way better deal. And people take advantage of stuff like that all the time because they like getting good deals. So if you're writing up the order, just be like, hey, you know, Sue, I just wanted to throw this out there. I mean, you guys are, the pairing knife you're getting today with tax, it's going to be $57.24. I just wanted to let you know, I mean, if you guys wanted to get the table knives with the pairing knife today, it's obviously going to bring the order up, but what happens if you spend over $100, we can split it up on the three payments where there's no interest at all. It's just a lot easier for you guys to split it up. And it would only be $67 today, so it would literally only be about $10 more. But if you guys did that, I could throw in that spatula spreader that you guys were looking at earlier for free, which would save you guys $59, and you'd be getting six pieces instead of one. And it would only be ten dollars more today. Just wanted to let you know. Now sometimes by the way, you can actually get it to be less. Like for example, let's say they're buying a pair of shears. Well first off, if they're buying just a pair of shears, like yeah I just want to get it, they're gonna pay tax on that. It's gonna be like one oh six. Well first off, how many payments can we do on a ninety nine dollar order? Two. Two. So if I can get them to just buy one other item 
I can probably throw in something for free, and I can split it up on three payments. And now not only get them to spend more, but actually spend less today, significantly less. Probably about half price of what they're currently spending today, and get them three pieces instead of just one. And so you can build on orders a lot just by using the bonus points and by using the payment breaks, $100 and $300, to get it either over three payments or to get it over five payments. Does this make sense? How many of you guys feel like this will help? Okay. Well, and I want you guys to understand, it's not, a lot of people are like, why don't you teach us this in training? And it's not that we don't want you to know how to use bonus points your first weekend, but the reality is, your first three, four, yeah, your first three, four, five demos, you, you just really need to learn the words first. You need to learn what to say before you have to bring in any cognitive thought about anything else. Otherwise, you just stress out your first three, four demos. And we just don't want you like worrying about, oh, what, what am I able to offer? I don't want you to have to worry about that your first three or four demos. You can use it for the rest of your career from here on out. And like I said, you can only use this the first time you see someone unless it was somebody you saw this weekend. If you feel like this might help you make a sale this weekend, uh, or somebody didn't buy it but they told you they would buy it later, I'd definitely approach those individuals. Now, if they already bought, I probably wouldn't even bring it up, unless you feel like it's someone you know really well, and you might be able to like be like, hey, just want to let you know, found out, you guys might be able to get a better deal, I just wanted to let you know, I maybe approach it on those individuals. Uh, just realize if you roll up the order already, you are going to have to call New York and have them like, you're going to have to do like a three-way call with your customer to New York to have them add things to an order just to make sure it's actually okay with that customer. But anyways, yes, Bill? I have a question about the administrative fee. Okay, if you yes. go over overtime, is it, that's $8, right? Uh, the admin fee is uh, $8 if they're doing five pay. Five yeah. But not three, two, three. No, and it tells you on the order form yeah. over by the payments box yeah. what it is. So the three pay it's four dollars, the yeah. two pay it's two dollars, and if they pay in full it's zero. Okay. Thank you. Any other any other questions on bonus points at all? Is that a question, sir? Yes, sir. So since I didn't roll those uh two sales that I made, I could go back to them and see if they, I can make a better deal with them? You could, however, you're not going to get paid for it for two weeks though because order turn in like right now. So I would say you're better off turning them in and just implementing it on all the rest of your appointments. That would honestly be my, my biggest advice because especially since both one's like a check, one's like a money order I think, you would probably have to like drive back over to their house, go get a new money order. It'd probably be more hassle than Those customers are already in as preferred customers now because they've bought so yep. down the road. So you can always you can use bonus offer points those later. things later on. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. So just to, to clarify that every fifth item for free that you guys were using this weekend, just throw it out the window. Right? You're never going to use it ever again. I mean, you can. It's, a, it's just an ultra conservative way to use bonus points. So, I mean, if you forget this, you can always go back to it, but you're always going to be able to offer better deals using the point system, and you're probably going to write up a lot more orders because of it. So my mom was my second appointment, and she is going to pay for the first and second order, but she's going to set her order, and I still go over with her. She was yeah, since she was someone you saw this weekend. Sure. Yeah. And you know what, guys? This is also great for those people that tell you, like, I want to do this, but can you wait till we get paid in two weeks? Call us in two weeks when we get paid. It's like, you know, I, I'm more than happy to do that, Joan. The only thing is, if I call you in two weeks and you want to do it then, I'm not going to be able to offer you that free spatula spinner. So, I mean, if you guys wanted to get it today, it's only the 67 today, and I don't know what some people do, is they'll just put, like, that payment on a credit card, and then when you get your paycheck in two weeks, if you want to call the company and just pay off the rest of the balance, you can totally do that. But that way, it at least saves you 60, 60 bucks by getting at least something today. So, I mean, do you think that's something you guys would like to try? And you guys realize that most people have a credit card that they will buy stuff with this month. They're going to spend 100 bucks, 200 bucks on their credit card this month. And it might be literally eating fast food. 
it might literally be going to a game. It might be literally, um, you know, going to the movies. It might literally be buying uh, a couple DVDs. You know, they're going to do stuff with that money. They're going to put it on a credit card. And most people have the ability to put 50 to 100 bucks on a credit card, and they can pay it off in two, two months. Even, like, people that, like, don't like doing payments. You know, they go down to R.C. Willie all the time, and they'll do, like, three months same as cash. Or they'll buy a couch on a, like a three month, six month, same as cash plan and not think anything about it. And that's in essence all they're doing. There's no interest on their payments at all. It's basically like doing a 90 days, same as cash in a sense, or 120 days, same as cash in many cases. And so, yeah. All right. Yes, what sir? if they still say no because they have bills and whatever? Oh, sure. I'm just going to throw it out there, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, absolutely. I'm like, hey, don't even worry about it, guys. I just figured it. I'll let you know, it'd save you about 60 bucks, but I have no problem telling you guys in a couple weeks. But I'm going to still throw it out there. And you'd be surprised how many people are like, well, we could put it on that one card. I mean, just do put it on that card. When I get paid next Thursday, I'll just pay it off. And, like, they work it out. They know how to do it. Just like you justify how to buy stuff when you want to buy stuff. We all do. And you grow up and you still do that. You just have more money, and so you justify it. It gets ways. worse. Yeah, it gets worse. It gets worse. As the things you want become more expensive and you start earning more, you justify more. So if a, a customer asks if you give them a call in two weeks, what if you just schedule them another appointment? Just so you have it right there. Most people won't do that. Most people are going, just call me. We'll do it, just call me. If they're willing to give you a date, yes. Yeah, but absolutely. You yeah. can't offer okay. the free stuff if they don't buy yeah. it on the first visit. Right, right. I would say if they're open to doing it, sure, that'd be ideal. But most people are going to be like, eh, why don't you just call me and we'll try and set something up. Nope. Which ends up being that big deal. In most cases. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Um, all right. So bonus points are pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna, this next thing I'm going to teach is actually even better than bonus points. This will probably actually help you potentially even more than bonus points as well. This is how I sold my very first Homemaker Plus 8. This is also how uh, Chana Koda, his first weekend, he had six appointments. Didn't have a single sale. After he learned this one thing, his next five appointments, he sold two Homemaker Plus 8s, two Essentials Plus 5s, and then like a $300 life plus. But sold three grand in the next five appointments after selling zero in the first six that he had. Uh, I also had Jaron Hathaway, his first weekend, he had four orders. For a total of three hundred dollars, he didn't sell a single set. After he learned this, his next three appointments, he sold three homemaker plus eights in a row. He sold twenty-four hundred dollars right after advanced training one that night, just using this one thing right here. It's kind of like the secret weapon in the Cutco world. Which any of you ever bought a car before? Okay, a few of you have. You guys are whether you bought a car or not, you're probably aware that people a lot of time will trade in their old cars to car dealerships when they go buy a new car. They'll trade in their old car and they get a discount on the new car that they're buying based off of the value of their vehicle. Well, how do you think customers would feel if we gave them a huge discount on Cutco if they traded in an old knife? Might be kind of big for some people. And I think most of you would agree. Most people's knives are not that great. You know, most people's knives are pretty terrible in many cases. Now let's say you're going to take like the worst knife they own. I'm talking the worst of the worst. Let's say it's a toss-up between, let's say that or one of those two. Now if you were to give them $100 for that knife, would you say that's a pretty good deal for them? Yeah. Yes. I guarantee they didn't spend $100 on this knife when it was brand new, let alone in the current condition that it's in. Yeah. We will give them $200 off if they trade in at least one old knife. Oh. And it's our trade in special. Now, you first can only, visit, right? first visit only. Now you can only do this on sets, and specifically only on sets with table knives. So these are going to be the sets like the ultimate, the signature. The Homemaker plus eight, not the basic. The Galley plus six, not the basic. The Essentials plus five, the Studio plus four. So sets with table knives. So you will sell a lot of sets using this. Now, here's the catch though. If they do the trade-in, they can't get any free stuff. So they can either pay a normal price, get free stuff, or they can do a trade-in and not get anything free, but get a discount 
on the Cutco, which if you think about it, in most cases, it's not the free stuff that's preventing them from getting it. In many cases, it's just the amount of money that they're considering. So the trade-in is great for those people who like Cutco, but they just think it's too expensive right now. Or they like it, but they sorry, they like it, but they have knives that they think are good enough. They're also great for those individuals. And so the trade-in here, uh, if they say the homemaker is a little too much, you're just going to read this little paragraph up on the top, and it just says, hey, you know, Nancy, do you have some old knives that you just don't like? And after you've done the demo, a lot of time they hate like all their knives, and so a lot of time they're like, "Yeah, I've got a whole drawer full of them." <laughs> all right. Well, even though, or we do have a special program that we're often called the Trade In Special. Now I can't give you the kitchen tools and the shears for free. That's where it goes in that blank right there. I can't give you the kitchen tools and the shears for free. Or if you had offered them something different, then obviously it would be that. But what I can do is take off $215 if you trade in at least one whole night. So instead of $1079, that would make your set only $864. And this one on the five month plan would only be, and you can look at the payments down below by the homemaker. So I would say, you know, that this one on the five month plan would actually only be $186 today, and then just $186 over the next four months. So it takes on about 40 bucks a month, actually. About 50 bucks a month, actually. So how does that sound? And when you say that, there's a lot of people who are all about that. I was, this is how I sold my very first homemaker plus eight. And a lot of time customers are funny because they just feel like they're ripping you off. Like they're like, can it be any knife? And you're like, yeah, probably be any knife. And they're like, what about this one? And I'm like, I'd even be willing to do it for that one. And they're like, so stoked, they're like, I only paid a quarter for this thing, and they're stoked, they're getting 200 bucks off, which, awesome, great. Um, it gives them a good deal, they're happy about it, and if you, if you ever want to know where all those like nasty knives came from, the training that we showed you, these are all traded, every single one of these are traded specials. Now, a couple things that you got to know, the discount's not always going to be 215 that is the discount on the homemaker. So each set will have a little bit of a different trade-in discount, and you can see the specifics on each set there. So the ultimate, they save $290 off, they actually save more. On the galley, though, if you turn it over, the galley, they save $143. On the essentials, they save $117. In studio, they save $83. And on the gourmet, they save $128. And uh, one thing that I would jot down in your notes, this is probably the most important thing for you to jot down as far as the training goes is how to incorporate it into the drop down process. So you're going to have a little bit of a different looking staircase by incorporating the trade in. So we start at the top with the homemakers. We offer the free stuff. We show them what that looks like on a 5K. And then we have to. Now, if that's a little bit too much, though, we drop down and we show them the trade-in. Now, can we give anything for free on a trade-in? No, we cannot, but can we do it on a 5 pack? Yes. yes, we can. And then we see if that's something that will work for their budget. Now, the reason you always want to show them the trade-in after you show them the normal set is because if you look at the trade-in sheet, the CPO for the homemaker trade-in is 651 which is actually lower than if they were to buy a homemaker normally. Even if you maxed out and used all of your points and like used 250 points, it's probably still going to be a CPO of about 820, 830. So it is always better to sell the set normally and give free stuff. It's going to be a way better CPO. However, 650 is a great order. Shoot, even if you're only at 10%, you made 65 bucks on that order, and you're over halfway to your first promotion already. So it's still a great order. And it's also a higher CPO than a gallon. So if that trade is a little bit too much, you're going to go back to showing just a normal galley set, no trade in. Go back to offering free stuff again. And see if that's something that works for them. Now if that's too much, then you're going to show the trade in on the galley. For the same reason. The CPO here is a little lower than a normal galley, but it's higher than a starter set. So if that trade in on the galley is still a little much, drop down and show them the starters. If that's too much, show them the trade-in. If that's too much, then you're just going to make a like list. Now, we don't have a trade-in special for the like list. 
However, we do have bonus points, which accomplishes the exact same thing, which is giving them a better deal. Now, this is what that process is going to look like now. So once you've got that written down, I want you to open up your manual to pages 10 and 11. page 10 and the very bottom of page 11 in your manual, I want you to write show trade in. Show trade in. So the very bottom of the page, below all the other writing, just write show trade in. And I want you to do the, and put some like stars around it, highlight it, I don't know, do something so you don't miss it. And then on the very bottom of page 12, I want you to do the same thing as well. So you should have show trade in written on the bottom of pages 10, 11, and 12. And then what I would do is in your manual, is take your trade-in special sheet and just cover up page 11 with it. So in your manual you should have page 10 showing, and then you should just have your trade-in special sheet just sitting right on top of page 11. So that way, when you're going through the appointment, you'll go through page 10, You'll ask the customer if they would like to get it, and if they say it's too much, you try and handle that knee-jerk reaction, and if they still say it's too much, then you're just going to jump up to the top of the trade-in special sheet. You say, well, I mean, do you guys have any old knife that you don't really like that much anymore? <coughs> yeah. All right, well, we do have a special program that we're offering called the trade-in special. Now, I want to be able to give you the kitchen tools and the shears for free, but what I could do is I could take off $215 off of the set, you guys trade in at least one whole knife. So instead of it being 1079, it's actually only 864. And I'm writing that down on my sheet of paper. I've got homemaker 230. Trade in 186. And I'm just writing that right there. Okay? And and then I explain that it's only 186 today. And I say, how does that sound? And if they're like, well, that's good, but I think it's a little much. Well, in that case, then I just take my sheet, move it over. And I go into page 11 just like normal. And if that's too much, then I just flip over my trade-in sheet and I explain the galley trade-in. If that's too much, then I go into page 12 and go into starters just like normal. And if that's too much, then I explain the trade-in specifically for that starter set that they picked, if there is one. But that's how it works. Now, Michael had asked, how do you write this up? How do you process it? Well, if they're doing the trade-in, you just take their knife, bring it into the office, and you just turn it in here at the office. And then this sheet will show you how to write it up right here. It shows you the quantities you got to write down on the order form, the item numbers, and the descriptions to write down and everything. However, there's one error on this sheet that will cause this to have an error when you try and put it online if you input it exactly as it's shown. So on the homemaker, you guys see the item number where it says 2001B, and then there's a color. You guys see that on the homemaker? Homemaker complaints. Yep, that one down there you see for the yes. item number it says 2001B and then you got to put the color. Here's the thing, when you put this online you have to put the B after the color. Okay. So it would actually be 2001 either C or W and then you put the B. And it's like that on all of these. Any item number that you see that has a B in it, make sure you put the color before the B. Otherwise when you try to put it online it will say invalid item number and they changed it about six months ago of how they wanted to input those item numbers and so we still haven't updated our sheet since then, so that's really what that is. So every single one of them basically has that? Yeah, okay. most of them, all except for the gourmet. Alright, cool? Yes, John. I, I want to ask you something, but I don't even remember to ask you before. Okay, good. Alright, but any other questions on the trade-in? Yes, right on. So when you do sell that, do you have to put the chicken for the knife? Well, the ones that they say to be for free, like it, on the homemaker, for example, you got to put eight table knives on there for free. Yeah, so if it says it's supposed to have X's next to it, make sure you put X next to it so the company doesn't charge them. And that's really, like, that's why we can't offer any free stuff on a trade-in, is because we're already, the way we're giving them the discount, guys, we're offering them part of the set.
for free, and that's how we're ultimately giving them the discount. And that's why we can't offer other free stuff, because we're offering some of the dives that are in the set for free to be able to give them the discount. So basically, that is offering a table management fee. On the homemaker, yes. Okay. On the homemaker, that is what's happening, yes. So, would you consider this a double discount? Because you say in the manual that the sets are already discounted. That's true. And the sets are. Um, it kind of depends on which set it is, but most sets are about a 10 to 20 percent discount already. And yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's nice. So, can we use can we use that? Can sure. We that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, if they want to buy more, we just put it on to the list as well. Just adding on to the sets, like they got the set, but they also wanted to buy like a gift box. They could do that as well. Just add it on to the list as well. So the whole is not longer, so that means you can't do the trade No trade-in on the basics. Okay. It's only on the sets with the table numbers. Right. Okay. Any other questions on the trade-in at all? No, but back to that question with the add-on. They buy the set, you give them the discount for trading in, and if they're buying something else, you can offer a free item for that Correct. with bonus points. Yes. Okay. Correct. Good question. Did you say it for the gourmet set? That it's like 128 or is it 123? But I have 123. Well, 123 is the five pay, the discount's 128. 128. Okay, thank you. That's just a service. You're welcome. Yep. Any other questions on the training at all? Okay, turn to pages 26 and 27 and look at it. I'm going to fly through this really quick. I want, I want you guys to just map out these next three days in your schedule. And first off, for tomorrow through Friday at 8 a.m., I want you to write PDI. And PDI is just a little reminder for you guys to make sure you don't forget to call in in the office in the morning between 8 a.m. and 9 with your morning report. And I'm going to talk about here in a moment what that report needs to actually be, but make sure you don't forget. If you don't call in in the morning, that would be like not showing up for work. Obviously, at any job that will get you fired, it will here as well. So, also make sure Wednesday night, between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., make sure you have that blocked off for advanced training too. So if you feel like you got some good stuff out of this meeting, you're definitely going to get some good, good things out of advanced training too that will help tremendously. Now, that's 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesday night. Now, the next thing that I want you to put in there is any personal commitments that you have outside of Vector for these next three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, any personal commitments that you know you've got going on outside of Vector. That might be another job. That might be a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment, church, a family commitment, a school commitment. Uh, significant other commitment, whatever. Anything you know you've got going on over Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I want you to block those things off. Yes, Mike. So what if we are in a situation where we can't call until, like, say, after 9 a.m.? Should we notify you ahead of time that that's going to be happening, or...? Um, is that because you've got a commitment going on at that time? Yeah. Then you call before you go into that commitment and leave it on the answering machine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we just have to have it by now. Okay. So you can always call before you go into that commitment. And you go. All right. Um, so once you've got any personal commitments blocked off, the next thing that you want to put into your schedule is phone time. One of the most common mistakes that new representatives make is they tell themselves they'll make phone calls when they get a chance. And the reality is, things will always consume any free time that you have. You know, all of a sudden your parents will ask you for help with some extra chores. Your significant other will help ask you for help with something. Your, your roommates invite a bunch of people over and you're going to make calls and now you've got a bunch of friends over and can't do it now. Things happen. The most important thing is to put the phone time into your schedule and make sure you don't sacrifice it no matter what. So if I were you, and I was in my fast start, and I was trying to like max out, have the best 10 days I possibly could, win as much cut as I could, and really make as much as I possibly could, if I were you, 
This is what I would suggest. Tonight, sometime between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m., I would block off at least 30 to 45 minutes where you can make some phone calls this evening between 7 and 9 o'clock. I would also recommend tomorrow, tomorrow morning, sometime between 8 and 9 a.m., I put at least 30 minutes in right there. At least 30 <coughs> minutes. Maybe even an hour would be smart. I would also recommend tomorrow night, between 7 and 9, put at least 30 minutes to an hour tomorrow night as well. Now, if you can't do all three of those, I would try and make sure you do at least two of the three, if you can. At a bare minimum, try to do at least two of the three. And if you actually do that, that will really ensure that you actually get the demo set up that you want to get set up for yourself. Now, once you've got that written in, I want you to put in A every hour and a half, or maybe even every two hours, in between all those other commitments and phone time, where you could do an appointment that wouldn't interfere with those other commitments that you have. And do this just for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Don't worry about the rest of the week, just Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And at the bottom of each day, there's a spot to put a goal. Once you've put that in right there, I want you to write what your goal is for the day. And that way in the morning when you're calling in for your PDI report, you can actually give us a goal based on reality, not a goal based on what would be really awesome if you had no other commitments in your life. Because I don't really care about that number. I and mean, it's one thing you'd be like, yeah, I want to do six tomorrow. But if you feasibly only have time to do three, I'd rather know that. I'd rather know three is probably going to happen versus six would be great. I don't really care about what would be great. All I care about is what you think is going to happen realistically. And what you're like trying to do everything in your power to make happen. That's what we want to know. And that also shows you what's possible appointment-wise these next two, three days if you really do want to max out. You might realize you have more time than you thought you did. You might realize you have less time than you thought you did. But either way, at least now you know. The next thing I want to mention is who you should really target your, who you should focus on calling these next two days. There's four groups of people I would really try and target. Number one, number one group that you should focus on calling this weekend is anybody who canceled or had to reschedule on you this weekend. Okay, I know some of you had this happen, a couple of you had appointments reschedule and move and things like that. If you had that happen, I would call any of those people who canceled or rescheduled or no-showed um, get them rescheduled for this week. Okay. There's probably some things that happen that were totally out of your control in that situation. Just call and get them rescheduled. The second group of people you should focus on calling is anyone that you called this weekend that you never got a hold of. Like maybe you tried them two or three times, but they never picked up. Okay, sometimes reps get discouraged after they called someone like four times, like, yeah, they're never home. And then they stop calling them for a week or two. Okay, so they might have been out of town, they might have been at a family reunion, they might have been at a funeral, they might have been working like crazy. If you would have called me the last four days, you wouldn't have got a hold of me. It just wouldn't have happened. It would not have happened. So, some people are really busy. And if you call them a few days in a row and they still don't answer, don't give up. Just try them again. You'll probably get them eventually. They just might have been busy. Now, the third group of people I would call is anyone that you called this weekend that told you to call them next week. It is next week now. So it is now time to call those individuals and get them set up for the week. And here's the fourth group and probably the most important group. It's all those people that you've been staring at on your initial list for the last two or three days that you have yet to muster up the courage to actually call and ask. We call this your chicken list. You have it. I know you have it. We all have it. We all have it. Many of my reps still have it. It's that list of people that like, yes, you know them. Yes, if they saw you, they would probably know who you are. Now, in fact, they would know who you are. But you probably feel incredibly awkward asking them to do a demo. In many cases, probably people you're not very close with, the more acquaintances, like you know them, you know who they are, and you feel really uncomfortable asking them to do an appointment with you. Yes or yes? Yes. Right. Yeah. Look at it this way, you guys. If you call somebody and you ask them to do an appointment, what's the worst thing they're going to say? No. 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 Worst case scenario is they're going to say no to you. In which case, you're not doing the demo already, so it's not like your situation's changed at all. 
And in most cases, these people that you're hesitating to call, my guess with most of them, is these are people you really never talk to. They're not people you really ever talk to a lot, so you feel kind of weird asking me out of the blue to do a demo with you. So if this person that you never talked to says no, you're going to continue to do what you've been doing for the last two or three years, which is not talk to them. <laughs> and your situation, again, hasn't changed. you got to realize, guys, no one's going to hate you because you ask them if they would be willing to let you do a training appointment for your new jobs training where they absolutely don't have to get anything. You get paid to be able to do it. You're just trying to get as many in as you can. They're not going to hate you. They're not going to think less of you. And even if they do say no, who cares? You've lost nothing. But have you actually asked every neighbor? Have you asked your doctor? Have you asked your lawyer? Have you asked your accountant? Have you asked every person that you graduated with if you could do an appointment with their parents? Have you asked every friend on Facebook if you could do an appointment with their family? Yeah. Have you asked all your brothers and sisters, like two or three closest friends, if you could do an appointment with their family? Yeah. Have you asked every old coworker that you've ever worked with before, every old boss that you've ever had before? And again, you can be upset that you don't have the amount of appointments that you have, or you can get out of your comfort zone and have as many demos as you want. Because most of you know two, three, probably 400 people on a first name basis. Like if you saw them, you'd know who they are. And they would know who you are. You just maybe aren't really super close with those people. So what you don't want to have happen though, you always hear all these reps that stop by or like work hard for the fast start. I would have worked so much harder. Why do you think they didn't? Was it that they didn't want the demos? No. They were scared of what people would think of them by asking them to do a demo. And they let their fear, hold on, they let their fear paralyze them from getting out of their comfort zone. And look at it this way. If you only do what you're comfortable doing in your life, you're never really going to grow as a person. You're not going to grow as a person. So, just ask. You don't want to muster up the courage in like three weeks and be like, ah, shoot, I'm going to call them. And have them be like, yeah, sure. And then go over and sell them a homemaker. And be like, oh, crap. Should have seen them in my fast start. I would have won the whole homemaker had I done that. You don't want to be thinking that. And that's what most of my team does. There's the 10% that sell way more than everyone else. They're the ones who are like, yeah, shoot, I'm just going to call them. And they actually did it. They had about the same amount of people written down. They just actually called them. Everyone else called like the seven that they were comfortable with. And then tried to build referrals off of that. And if you do that, you're going to struggle. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just not as easy. Make it as easy as possible. See everything. Let them decide if they'd like to do it or not. If they say no, it's not that big of a deal. It's not a big deal unless you make it a big deal. You know, if you call them up and they say no, just like, hey, you know what? I knew you were super busy. I didn't, I didn't know if you would be able to do it or not. I just figured I'd ask. I was just trying to get some appointments in, but no worries. You know, thanks anyways. You know, it's only weird unless you make it weird. If they're like, yeah, I, I really can't. You're like, oh, okay. No, thanks anyways. You know, and you act all weird about it, then yeah, it's weird. But you don't have to make it like that. So if they say no, they say no. If they say yes, you got a lot to gain. Um, the last thing I'm going to say here, guys, um, I'm going to give you two assignments, but then I'm also, uh, I have to preface this. Make sure you guys do not forget to call in in the morning. This is a very serious issue. Uh, now, most of you were really great about this this morning, but there was a few of you who forgot. And just a little reminder, Monday through Friday, between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., everyone on our team calls in and gives us their PDI report. So if you can, really fast, turn to page 34. Some of you are like, so what all do we need to say when we call in? This is what we need. And this is all we need. We don't need anything more. We definitely can't have anything less, but I don't need anything more than this. And it's just how many appointments you had the day before, how many sales you had, what your total CPO for the day was, how many names you got written down, how many yeses you got, how many alley-oops you have, how many you currently have lined up for the day, and what your goal for the day is, and what you have for tomorrow, and what your goal for that. And that's always what we're going to need. And the thing is, is not only do I want to know where you're at in the business, but I have to report this information to Aaron Love every morning by 9.30. So if I don't have your report, it basically looks like you just didn't show up. And it reflects very poorly on you. It reflects very poorly on me as well. And so if you forgot this morning, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You always get one get out of jail free card. It's the very first time you're supposed to do it, which was today. So if you forgot this morning, I'm not upset. It's fine. 
Just make sure you don't forget tomorrow. But I will let you know, if you forget a second time, I'm going to have a radically different conversation with you. If you forget three times, I'm probably going to have you return your kid at that point. Because if I'm going to work with you, I've got to know you're reliable. You got to be someone that we can at least count on to show up for work, and that's how you show up to work at this job. Is you at least give us your report. Now, if you had a day where you had no appointments the day before, you don't need to be like yesterday. I had zero appointments, zero sales, zero CPO, zero. Okay, you can say yesterday I didn't have any appointments. We'll assume it was zero across the board, and then you pick up with that day's report. Okay? Now, um, any questions on when you're supposed to call in or what you're supposed to say when you call in? Okay, I've got two assignments for you. So if you want to put these on the back page, number one, memorize 9, 10, and 15. If you're not on a demo or making phone calls these next two days, probably one of the best things you can do for yourself is be memorizing those three pages. The second assignment I'm going to give you is complete five appointments by Wednesday night and advanced training two. Now, because you are independent contractors, I cannot mandate that you complete five appointments. However, I can make it very appealing to do so. And this is what I will do. Anyone who completes five appointments over tomorrow and Wednesday, so not this doesn't include appointments tonight, but over tomorrow and Wednesday, if you do at least five, you get an extra day in your fast start. Okay? So some of you already have five lined up. Awesome. Some of you might only have a couple. I definitely make sure you get a chance to make some calls tonight to get those five lined up. But if you get five appointments completed over Tuesday and Wednesday, you get an extra day towards the Fast Start contest. So instead of your Fast Start being over Sunday night, it's over Monday night. Now, if you wrote down 100 names in training for recommendations, you get two extra days. So it'd be over Tuesday night instead of Sunday night. So you get an extra day, though, for anyone that completes five appointments. The other thing I want to say is make sure anything you sell tonight, make sure you put it online by midnight tonight. Okay, if you wait till tomorrow morning, it's not going to be on your first paycheck. That's the thing you got to realize. If you wait till tomorrow morning to put your orders online, it's not going to be on your first paycheck. It'll be on your second paycheck. So whatever you sell today, you got to make sure you put it online. However, base pay is done after this meeting for this last week. So all the appointments that you do tonight in terms of base pay, that will go on your second paycheck. But orders can count up until midnight because we can put those online. Uh, we're shipping out everything to New York right now, and so we can't ship out any more base pay, but we can ship out orders via putting orders online by midnight. So what can I say? Yeah, I had difficulty putting the numbers in. Uh, to, uh, if you to tried it Friday it. night or Saturday night, yeah. you guys did not have access. There was, a, there was an error in the system where it didn't put your guys' info into our system until Sunday afternoon. And so if you tried to hop online Friday night or Saturday, it probably said invalid rep number. That's right. And yeah, or invalid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you do have access now. So you just got to make sure you stick around, get those online. Um, and we got to actually get out of here right now. But the supplies are on that back table, guys. If you need rope, leather, order forms, any of that.